How does an AIO work? CPUs generate a lot of heat. Now, some of them generate more of it than others. I discuss this in more detail right here. Also, why CPUs generate heat in the first place. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about the all-in-one liquid cooler, how it works, and why you might consider one. Our model and example today is the Aerocool P7L240. This AIO boasts a 240 millimeter aluminum radiator, copper CPU block, and full on RGB support. You can even fill it yourself, which is rare for an AIO. Now in its basic form from start to finish, the CPU block, typically copper or nickel plated, conducts heat generated by the processor underneath. Liquid in the loop moves through a series of tiny channels connected to the block, absorbing energy from the system below. The idea here is to pull energy, heat, away from the CPU. It is then pushed through a tube to the radiator where small channels run on one side from top to bottom and then from bottom to top on the other. It is here where tiny fins pull energy away from the heated water and where fans aid in transferring this waste heat to the air. Contrary to their names, radiators transfer a majority of their heat via the process of convection, not radiation. Now most of these AIOs have a small pump hidden in the CPU block which is responsible for churning the fluid. Without it, water would lose its transfer transferable abilities, and the closed system would become extremely inefficient, which is not what we want. The liquid in most AIOs is water-based because it has a relatively high heat capacity, meaning that it can absorb large quantities of heat before it physically becomes hotter by 1 degree Kelvin or Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on your units. The L240 from Aerocool in particular sports a relatively low fin density, something to look out for, roughly 18 per inch, which is a tad lower than the industry standard, but this is actually better from a noise standpoint and doesn't require fans with higher static pressure. The mixture of aluminum and copper usually sets off a few alarms for those with attuned ears, but galvanic corrosion is mitigated thanks to special properties and special chemicals in the liquid that I mentioned earlier. Most AIO manufacturers opt for a copper block and aluminum radiator for a few reasons. Firstly, aluminum rads are cheaper than their copper counterparts, so saving money wherever you can. The metal is also lighter, which saves weight, especially during shipping, and its low density means that heat readily radiates. Now, copper is a better conductor of heat and I don't want to get into like the you know the specifics about whether or not copper is a better radiator of heat or if it retains heat more than aluminum does because aluminum is less dense but what you should know is that copper is generally not used for radiators of you know AIO calibers because it just is more expensive overall. Now pay close attention to this part because this seems to get so many people confused and aggravated. In a nutshell combining both metals in a closed system is a no-no but anti-corrosive additives in the fluid keep things in check for several years. Years. Most radiators from Corsair to NZXT to Aerocool variants utilize this config, don't freak out. Lastly, I want to bring up radiator placement. You'll find a few videos addressing this in great detail, but to be blunt and to the point, because some of those videos last 10 or so minutes, placing your radiator up front is ideal for most users utilizing open air graphics cards. The front mount allows the fans to pull in fresh air, providing a stark enough difference in temperature to cool the liquid in the loop appropriately. Just make sure you're using a case with decent enough front airflow, we learned our mistakes in 2017 regarding that. By the way, for those still watching, I want to ask all of you a question, whether or not you prefer AIOs in general or air coolers. Now, I understand the arguments for both. I have used both and I can say that it really depends on the system. It depends on the budget. In most cases, I would, I would prefer to opt for either a really beefy air cooler or an AIO that doesn't cost more than about a hundred or so US dollars. The reason why I think that that should be the cutoff for an AIO is because if you want to spend any more than that, you're usually not paying for the extra TDP, right? The ability for that for the AIO to take more heat from your CPU, which would give you better overclocks. Most of the time you're just paying for added features like RGB support and better fans, maybe something along those lines or maybe a quieter system. Uh, but AIOs in general aren't going to be perfectly silent. You will hear the pump more than likely you might hear the fluid churning and the fans generally included are decent but not the best. Now if you go with an air cooler you're going to have the advantage of usually a cheaper overall CPU cooler and on top of that it's not going to require any maintenance at all. You really don't have to worry about anything breaking save the fan and even if that breaks you don't have to worry about your system completely overheating because you still have a pretty decent heat sink there to uh, give you some sort of passive cooling for the time being. That said, they can get pretty loud, and most of them, too, do not include 
very nice fans. What I can say about the L240 from Aerocool is that this thing is actually pretty good for what you're paying. A bit pricey, but you do get to fill the loop yourself if you want to get really fancy with it, and the RGB support is something you're paying an extra for, but it's going to look pretty darn good in your case. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. We appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.